Howdy again everyone! With the birth of a new camera system in Canon's new APS-C RF mount cameras, well sort of new anyway, comes the arrival of a new bog standard cheap as you can get zoomable APS-C kit lens and here is Canon's offering today, the RFS 18-45mm f4.5-6.3 ISSTM. If bought by itself, it'll set you back a slightly ridiculous £300. If bought as a kit with a new camera, it's only £100, so unless the lens turns out to be absolutely spectacular somehow, you shouldn't really consider buying it separately. Canon have simultaneously marketed a new RFS 18-150mm kit lens, which will more commonly be packed with their more expensive EOS R7 camera. A review of that more interesting super zoom lens is coming very soon. In exchange for being small, light and inexpensive when bought with your camera, the key limiting aspect of this lens is its short zoom range and unusually dark maximum aperture. 18-45mm is only the full frame equivalent of about 29-72mm, so you won't be getting particularly wide nor telephoto shots here. Most competing lenses on other systems start as wide as 16 or even 15mm, so that is disappointing, and also the maximum aperture of only f4.5 to f6.3 as you zoom in is fairly poor, again not as good as the competition from Sony or Nikon. You won't be getting very out of focus backgrounds in your images with this lens at all, and it won't be very good for shooting in darker situations either. Thankfully though, Canon have at least included image stabilisation built into the lens. Here's some footage with stabilisation turned off and now turned on. As you can see, it'll make a big difference to your video work and help you to get sharper still images too. Those opting for this small 18-45mm kit lens will find themselves with a compact, lightweight lens, although as you can see here, it's not quite as small as other kit lenses on the market, both the Sony and Nikon Z APS-C kit lenses are a lot smaller, despite having wider zoom ranges, but still, it's a small lens that might be handy for travel and landscape photography. The lens is super plasticky, even being based on a plastic lens mount with no weather sealing. The zoom ring clicks quite heavily out of storage mode and into shooting mode with a mechanism that feels a bit cheap, and the zoom ring is a little sticky to turn also. At the end, there's a little plastic focus ring. Now that turns extremely smoothly, and it can be customised to control all kinds of things other than the focus if you look in your camera's menu. That focus ring works nice and responsively with the focus motor, but the lens does display some focus breathing, zooming in and out as you change focus here, whether you're shooting at wide or telephoto ends of the zoom range. The lens's autofocus motor is quiet, accurate and lightning fast, a lovely huge difference from the kit lenses that were around only about 10 years ago. The lens's filter thread is a small 49mm wide and it does not come with a hood. Overall, the lens's electronics function very well, but anyone who's paid £300 to buy it separately from a camera will feel pretty unhappy about its super cheap and plasticky build quality. Well, let's take a look at its image quality now. I ran a poll a while ago asking my subscribers whether I should test Canon's new APS-C lenses on a 24 megapixel R10 camera or a 32.5 megapixel R7, and the answer was pretty clear, so here's an image taken on the challenging sensor of the R7 with in-camera corrections turned on. In the middle of the image at 18mm, from the widest aperture, we see very good sharpness in the middle of the image, although contrast is only fair. Corner image quality is a lot softer, unsurprisingly. Stopping down to f5.6 or f8 barely makes any difference, stop down as far as f11, and on the very high resolution sensor of the R7, diffraction is already causing noticeable softness. Let's zoom in halfway to 28mm, where the maximum aperture has now darkened to f5. In the middle of the image we see fairly good, but not great resolution, corner image quality is really quite bad still. However, this time, if you stop down to f8, then there's a noticeable improvement in corner image quality, and back in the middle, a nice little extra edge of sharpness is visible. However, again, stop down from here to f11, and we start seeing softness again from the effects of diffraction across the whole image frame, so really, in the middle of the zoom range, you'll just want to shoot at f8. Finally, let's zoom all the way into 45mm, 
The maximum aperture here is now a pretty dark f6.3, so on the 32.5 megapixel sensor of the Canon EOS R7, the image is already being affected by diffraction. Well, anyway, in the middle of the image, sharpness is still fairly good and contrast just okay. Some good news is that, this time, corner image quality isn't quite as bad, we can actually make out what's going on here pretty well. Stopping down to f8 makes no difference here, and stopping down to f11, once again, introduces more softness due to diffraction. By the way, for those of you who are really interested in diffraction, for whatever reason, at 45mm you can stop this lens down to a ridiculous f32. Just look at that. Anyway, talk of diffraction aside, if you mount this lens onto a high resolution camera, then it performs quite poorly, there's no two ways about it. On a 24 megapixel sensor, your images may look a little more acceptable though, and you won't be quite as limited by diffraction, but the performance still won't be dramatically different. Well, let's move on now and look at vignetting and distortion. Here are some images taken from raw files without in-camera corrections. The situation is pretty messy at 18mm, strong barrel distortion is coupled together with image corners that are literally black from vignetting in their extremes. As you stop down to about f11, the corners do brighten up, but the very edges remain black. Zoom in to 45mm though, and that distortion straightens out. This is probably why the image quality in the corners was so much better there, the camera isn't having to do dramatic corrections anymore. At f6.3, there's a little darkness in the corners, but at f11 they do brighten up. So, if you're shooting raw images at wide angles, make sure those image corrections are getting done. This lens does have one little ace up its sleeve, the ability to shoot very close to your subject, down to 35cm, which is useful and creative. However, at f6.3, close-up image quality is seriously washed out. Stop down to f8 for a lot more contrast, but still plenty of colour fringing. Stopping down to f11 is your best bet, I think, although still, the close-up image quality is looking pretty soft. Now, let's see how well the lens works against bright light. The lens's very small glass optics mean that there's no serious problems with flaring or loss of contrast here, and it puts in a good show. Finally, bokeh. The dark maximum aperture of this lens makes it very difficult to get out of focus backgrounds in your images unless you're shooting close up. When you do get them, they at least look nice and soft. Overall, well, ugh, that's all I can really say. A very limiting zoom range, a middling maximum aperture, and so-so image quality means that this isn't really a lens I can recommend, although admittedly, its price of only £100 when bought with a camera means it's at least an inexpensive way to get your lens collection off the ground. I'm a little puzzled over what Canon were thinking with this lens, they certainly haven't bothered to make it competitive compared to those on other camera systems, which seems like a rather arrogant approach, so those of you who end up with this little kit lens should consider upgrading as soon as your budget allows. If you're a Canon fan and you're feeling disappointed right now, well, keep an eye on this channel for the next few weeks, because you might find my review of this lens's 18-150mm brother a bit more encouraging, that's all I'm gonna say for now. And I get encouraged by all my generous supporters over on Patreon, thank you so much for your generosity in keeping these lens reviews trucking on, and if you haven't checked it out already, then take a look at the link in the description below, I love giving supporters all kinds of exclusive bonus content, including special videos every month. Ciao everyone!